Um, so both of those are contributing. Now, I want to highlight two studies that actually looks at um, the influence of each of these signals. Again, the uptake of free fatty acids and the de novo lipogenesis. So the liver pulling in fat to store and then compare that with the liver making its own fat to store. So one study, and this is Lambert et al. Lambert is the name of the first author, last name of the first author, 2014. And this study highlighted that subjects with fatty liver disease had more than a three-fold higher rate of de novo uh, lipogenesis, so synthesizing new fats, than subjects with high levels, without high levels of liver fat. So people that had higher liver fat had a three times higher rate of making fat within the liver compared to those who did not have fatty liver disease. Um, and what's interesting and, and something that we're going to talk more about in a future episode when we talk about saturated fats is that when the liver has been told to make fat, it always makes one type of fat, and that is palmitic acid or palmitate, which is the, major, the, the, the majority of the saturated fats we have in our body, including the fats that are circulating in our blood within triglyceride-rich molecules like in LDL. So anytime people are talking about the problems of saturated fats in the blood, the inconvenient truth for, the, for those individuals is that most of that saturated fat is coming from what the liver is making. So again, we see that in people with fatty liver disease, they are making a lot more fat within their liver, three times more than people without fatty liver without fatty liver disease. So strong indication, strong evidence that de novo lipogenesis or the synthesis of new fat is a clear and relevant variable um, in people with fatty liver disease. Now, to directly compare de novo lipogenesis with free fatty acid uptake, another study, and this is Donnelly et al. in 2005, they documented that in fatty liver disease, approximately uh, roughly 60% of all of the fat in the liver came from free fatty acids, as opposed to almost 30% from de novo lipogenesis. And then a, 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 that smaller portion, whatever left, coming from what was circulating from the diet in the chylomicron. So well over half of all of the fat going into the fatty liver is coming from the free fatty acids, from the fat tissue breaking down. And then about half of that amount is coming, uh, when comparing them, is coming from de novo lipogenesis. And then don't forget the study I just mentioned previously indicating that if someone has fatty liver disease, they're making three times more fat than the person who doesn't have it. And of course, there are a, very, uh, a variety of factors that play into this. Why is the fat cell undergoing lipolysis in the first place? Normally, in, in an insulin-sensitive individual, so a healthy, metabolically flexible person, free fatty acids are always going to be the inverse of whatever insulin is because of what insulin does to lipolysis, specifically Insulin inhibits lipolysis. Insulin inhibits the breakdown of fat, and it does so exceptionally well. Even a modest increase in insulin is sufficient to slow down lipolysis and inhibit it. Thus, in a state where insulin is elevated, free fatty acids will be very, very low. In a state where insulin is low, now there is no longer an inhibition of lipolysis, Thus, free fatty acids will be elevated. So in a healthy, insulin-sensitive, metabolically flexible state, again, insulin and free fatty acids will always be in the opposite directions. Now, if insulin is low and the free fatty acids are elevated, why are those free fatty acids not contributing to fatty liver disease? In other words, if someone is fasting, why at the end of their fast is their liver actually leaner if they fast for 24 hours, there's less fat in their liver than there was before the, fat, the fast started. Because now, can you see the problem? If it's just all about how many free, what are the, what's the availability of the free fatty acids, then it should be fatter. So you fast, your insulin comes down very quickly, minute for minute. Fasting is the fastest way to lower insulin. There's no debating that. And during the fast, as insulin's coming down, no surprise, free fatty acids are coming up. That, based on how I've, in this very simplified manner, described it, that should be contributing to fatty liver disease, right? But again, at the end of, say, a 24-hour fast, the liver is not fatter, even though free fatty acids are very high. 
Remember what I said very early on, even in this discussion, let alone many, many previous, that insulin tells cells what to do with energy. And if insulin is low, even though the liver can still pull in those fatty acids, it will not store them. It will not push them into this pathway of turning them into stored triglycerides, the storage form of fat. No. So if you can't store the fat, what do you think the liver will do with it? It will burn it. It will burn the fat because if insulin is low, it has no other option.